Hello and welcome back to Let's Try. We're trying the last spell. I've been really excited about this and uh, keep provided by Dev or uh, Studio. Thank you very much, Studio. I <laughs> appreciate you, bud. Really appreciate it. I've been really excited about this one um, and a little bit intimidated. I have to be uh, be honest because um, I know that this is uh, they're they're gonna they're going for something here. Um, they're going for something very very challenging. This is not necessarily a game you are meant to win uh at least definitely not on your first try definitely not on your first five or ten tries but it's a it's a very interesting take on on this, this genre what genre is this well it's a tactics game but we're gonna get into it this game is in early access so a lot of what you're seeing is subject to change uh including balances balancing and stuff like that um there's a lot going on here so we'll, we'll talk about it war war never changes for centuries, the world was engulfed in never-ending strife and chaos. Elves fighting dwarves, dwarves fighting men, orcs fighting everyone. The common folk were bled dry. Poverty, famine, disease. Secluded in his tower, researching forbidden magic secrets. The archmage Hieronymus, Hieronymus Teller made an extraordinary discovery. A wild, unknown type of magic with tremendous power. Uh, spells of mass destruction capable of bl obliterating any city in one strike. Driven by the hope of ending all wars, he launched the spell on a small village. A gigantic dark ball of purple flames fell from the sky and smashed into the town center. Leaving only ruin, lifeless bodies and purple fumes. Yo. Devastating. The whole royal family of a neighboring kingdom was present at that time. They all died. The king, mad with grief, ordered his mages to research his this new magic. He made his mages unleash hell on the neighboring capital city. Oh my god, this is, this is brutal. Several hundred thousand died. The tremor shook all the kingdoms. All of them researched the, tr the purple magic. The sky was constantly flashing purple bursts. Thundering explosions were heard every hour. War was no more, only annihilation. There is no turning back. At some point, the explosion stopped, a resounding silence. A strange mist started to aggregate around the remaining cities. Small groups of survivors started to gather. The mist around them was thickening. At night, they had to defend against attacks from strange monsters. They all... They called them claw... Clawers? That's a difficult word to say. Clawers? They appointed a leader, the commander, and started rebuilding roofs and defenses, a new haven. Most mages were hanged, or worse, in retribution. Some of them, fearing for their lives, tried to find an answer. They found a way. A spell. The last spell. They built a circle of power to channel their combined magic. The goal was simple, yet nearly impossible. Channel enough energy to summon and break the seals of magic. Banishing all magic from this world forever. But when, cam when comes the night, terrifying mutated creatures appear. They come out of the mist to kill. The survivor's only hope is to fight night after night and protect these mages at any cost until the last spell is cast. I really, really appreciate the uh, the vibes of this game. They, they, like, honestly, I've never been more kind of instantly compelled by a story like that. And also, um, I was really appreciating just the music in the main menu is, like, amazing. Uh, this is one of the few games I might actually have to pick up the soundtrack for because it's, like, fantastic. Um, so I, I'm, I'm excited for this. Defend the last bastion of humanity with your squad of heroes. Exterminate fiendish monsters with magic and brute force by night. And rebuild your battered city defenses by day. Your goal, you must protect the magic circle until the mages cast the last spell. You lose if the magic circle is destroyed. All your heroes are dead. Position your heroes. Place them just outside the city. 
The city stash is unavailable during the night, so make sure to equip all your gear beforehand. The direction of incoming hordes is shown in the com commander's journal. Alright. So, not not a lot of tutelage going on, but that's not necessarily become because the... Uh, the game is it doesn't have a lot of depth it's because maybe it isn't in the game yet but we can we can kind of power through as it is so we can see the incoming force uh, of mutated or mutant monsters coming in um, so northwest we position our heroes we have Grigory Florian Lorelei 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 um, and here is our one mage casting the last spell. Who knows how long they will take to do that. So we're going to position our heroes. I'm not sure what the best or optimal positioning would be for them, but I am going to want to gear them up. Maybe what do we have here? A temple can restore some health to heroes during production phase with the help of workers. Uh, we have a house increases the number of workers in the city. Workers are used during production phase to use buildings, active abilities. We have some ruins can be scavenged for go some gold and materials using production phase with the help. Well, we're not in production phase. We're in deployment phase. Um, I would like to get our our friendos geared up if I can. Grant the ability to buy or sell items during production phase. Well, 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 well. None of that is really what I want. Um, okay, so we have two equipment sets for, I assume, every hero. Um, what is this lad using? Oh, a wand. They are going to be casting some spells. Uh, and then we have like a good old sword and board, but they're using a hammer. Um, alright. City stash. Let's look at the city stash and see if we can't find some goods for them. Looks like there's nothing in there. We have nothing. So I think for now we're just setting up our heroes for our first wave. And then we'll end the phase. It's already missed o'clock. There they are. Fight monsters until they're all dead. Move your heroes and use their skills in any order you like. Once you're done, comes the horde's turn. Uh, any enemy within your haven or damaging its buildings will cause some panic. At the end of the night, the panic level determines your rewards. Oh, health and mana are not fully restored every day. Consult the character sheet for each hero's daily health and mana regen. Heroes have two different weapon sets and can swap freely between them. I nice. I figured I figured that out. Any attribute uh, modifier granted by the equipment is always applied, even for the weapon set that is not currently active. Oh, interesting. Okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, a hero's available skills depend on the gear they have equipped. Skill. Uh, one hockey one okay undo a move any movement is cancelable until you cast a skill undo hockey delete all right so we select heroes we can do their or their turn in any order you can use the mount middle mouse button to move around it's kind of nice let's have a look at what some of these skills oh, I got I gotta say just the look of this game the execution on this is is super slick I really appreciate it um sword of Democles. I'm gonna say it is in a Greek way because it looks kind of Greek. Democles. Uh, magic damage ignores 50% of the target's resistance. Transfer gives back a portion of the given attribute. Not sure what that means. Oh, restoration. Okay. Um, magic missiles. Classic. The skill will be cast multiple times on the targets of your choice. That sounds pretty good, but that also uses up mana, as I can see there. And then Brace uh, increases an attribute for a given duration. Punch. Jump over. Oh, um, give me one second. Okay, never mind. I thought I had my audio um, set up incorrect. But that I, did. I was incorrect about that, thankfully. Precise shot. Okay, we we want to move up a little bit. Can, we can see how fast they can move up, which is not too bad. Um, so let's move in a little bit and start pelting these guys with some damage. Um, maybe we want to do just a normal precise shot on some of these. Uh, we can see they have 100 health, so one of these precise shots is not actually going to kill them. 
which is a little bit spooky so maybe we ought to use some of our mana they said that we could see how much um mana they would regenerate on each turn or each uh, production phase uh required to use some of the skills but where mana is only partially restored every morning as defined by mana regen our mana regen is four so that means we could use a, a spell like rain of arrows and that wouldn't be a bad idea so we, we can cast this for basically free um the thing about that is you're going to want to use it a spell like that as optimally as possible uh if we're going to use a spell like that we would get four enemies in this spell, so that's not terrible. I'm just wondering if there isn't a better option. Four. Um, we can always move a little bit if we need to. Four. Uh, it looks like f maybe four is the best I can do. All right, we'll do four. Nice, and that killed four of them. Taste of my wrath. Um, all right, so we're gonna want to probably get our Vlad Grigory in there. Although, what is his stuff? Melee, uh, range one to two. So he does have some ranged abilities, but I'm assuming they're going to move him as well. Uh, deals 200 damage to armor. Stomp, that's gonna be a uh, small ranged ability. Evasion, applies to the caster, the spell, increases an attribute for a given duration. So that's going to increase our dodge. So he has to, he, he really has to kind of get in there and get his hands dirty. So I'm going to move him up with the intention uh, of not attacking this turn since he can't reach them. But I don't want to move him too close so that he doesn't take a hit. Um, and what I will do is I think I'll increase our evasion for, for free. You know, just to prep ourselves up a little bit. And then um, Lorelei, I think... What's their uh, magic regen? Their magic regen is four, uh, to eight. So that means they could cast magic missiles twice uh, and regen the cost on that. So let's consider moving him up a little bit. That's their maximum uh, movement move used. Sorry, I flood my words like that, that badly. Uh, targets limit per turn twice. Uh, multiple hits, four. So he's gonna hit four units. So the best we can do right now is three. Maybe he can hit someone else twice. Yes, he can. So that means he can kill one unit and then damage two units. So that's gonna do it for our turn. And then the, they will move up. It looks like this lad here has reduced movement. I may have caused some of that since um, I, I damaged him. And he also is bleeding, it seems. Oh, okay, so when they they have reduced health, they get a kind of a bleeding effect. I wonder if that means that when they move, they'll take some damage. Now the fun begins. Oh my god. Okay, I was not expecting more. I thought that that was going to be kind of it. So that's spooky. Uh, I'm wondering if it wouldn't be worth hitting the units in the front to cause them to... Uh, move slower uh, maybe block the units in the back we can do more than one attack per character but the problem is, is I just used my mana my free mana for the turn um, so anything else I use that uses up mana is going to be a problem it gives back a portion of the given attribute in this case it's going to be action points and move points so I could give them more action points it's an interesting idea. Uh, increases, uh, this is for, applies to the caster of the skill. Ignores 50% of the time. We could just do a normal attack. That doesn't cost us any mana. And we could actually do that again because we have a certain number of action points. So we'll, we'll do some more damage to some of these lads. He's got like no health left. So I'm not sure what that means for him. If he moves, will he die? So now we can have our friend here. Um, I can't remember. Grigory. Grigory. Uh, do something. We can do a bash. I kind of want to try a crush. 
multiplier of applied to the hero's opportunism uh, attribute for this attack. I'm not sure what that means, but that's something we could figure out in the future. So I'm gonna move him up and we're gonna try this crush. That does indeed do uh, a nice kind of ranged attack. We want to do more stuff like that. We have three, um, three uh, attributes. We could do a stomp. So we'll move up and we'll do a stomp uh, here. Oh, I see that's, it's, he, he does the stomp forward. This is actually not a bad use of the stomp. That will kill quite a few units. And we can move him over here and then use another uh, crush, kill another couple units. So that was quite a lot of units killed. Unfortunately, he is within range. We could back him up. This guy has quite a lot of movement, even when he's very, like, damaged. Uh, and we still have to use our lad here, so he's got four abilities. When I used um, the tight vo volley, I could have used that, like, done more attacks, because it was only two action points. So I'm starting to get the hang of this. This is the kind of game where, like, it, every move is matters for sure, but, like, you know, y you're going to be killing you're, you're looking to kill the most like i don't know it's, it's it's hard to explain but this is a unique tactics game in that there aren't like four units on both sides and you're looking to kill like one of them like over the course of multiple turns this is kind of a zombie survival tactics game which i haven't seen honestly at all power shot um will this like go through units or will this just like kill the one unit um this attack lacks uh, lack of precision increases the target's dodge. Is in inaccurate increasing the target's dodge. Okay, so I think um, we do want to look, do maybe another tight volley, and then just another couple of basic attacks. Oh, we didn't do a tight volley before, um, but this isn't a bad use of it. I guess we did a rain of arrows. And the Reign of Arrows, I mean, we could get like five targets, but I don't think that that's necessarily... I wish I could rotate it, um, like the, the volley itself. So we'll do a tight volley. We'll see, like, we can get five here. That's pretty good. Um, I do think I should take out this guy because he's going... Oh, I can't because he's uh, he's got kind of a donut range. So I'll move back one and kill that dude since he's got nasty range. These dudes seem to not have good range, um, like of movement, because we've we've damaged them a couple times. Clawer, clawer. These are all clawers. I don't know. Oh, okay. So we have a runner back there, so he can reach us, um, which is not good. So maybe we could uh, hit him a couple times. Oh, nice, perfect. So I'm starting to get the hang of this. I'm starting to learn, like, you know, you want to kind of look out for the special units because um, they're obviously going to create, you know, problems for us. Um, I think our dude is safe. It looks to me like everyone is pretty much okay. Oh, oh, that, that runner is actually going to create a problem for us. Okay, so is there anything I can do for him? No. So this, that could be a problem for us. Oh, he's like surrounded. Okay, so he took some damage and that's really not good. I think that damage is like significant in this game. Um, let's do like a stomp because that's going to be like really effective. Can we do another stomp? My magic is weakening. Oh, that's using, that does use up his mana. So um, I've probably, well, he's got mana regen 12, which is actually really good. So I'm not sure. Uh, his total is 13, base 20. Oh, I see, I, uh, no, I have seven. It's actually difficult to really determine, like how much is our full mana? Is it 20? Uh, hard to tell. It's telling me a lot of things. Um, 
and not all of them are the are the information I'm, I'm actually seeking. So we're gonna back up a little bit. Um, there's a lot of runners. Those are the ones I'm, I'm kind of concerned about right now. So we might wanna do um, a rain of arrows to take a couple of them out. This one would actually cover a lot of runners. So I think I do wanna do that. I'm not gonna worry too much about like the mana regen right now. We'll do another, we'll do a tight volley as well. This is, this is pretty good. Nice. Okay, and we're gonna back him up as well. And um, our friend here, he's, we're gonna want to take out the last couple of runners that are surviving right now. Um, also this guy, who's just like managed to survive everything. So, um, sort of Demaculis might be good. This guy, I don't know. I don't know how much health they have. It says 100, but that could just be like a percentage, right? So let's try that. That did not kill him. So we'll just take them out. Um, we could do another magic missiles. Might, might be pretty good. We'll do two on this guy, and then we'll pick off another couple of the others. That was a waste, because apparently I killed, uh, killed him in the one. And we're going to back up a little bit and let them come to us. This guy can move up a little bit more. All right. So um, things are, I think they're, the horde is thinning out a little bit. And the good news is I'm not seeing too many more runners. Um, that, is, that is definitely a concern. So we're gonna need to move this guy up a little bit. Um, just a little bit, we should be able to take out a few you guys i want to take care of this last runner that i see oh just barely not enough so he's gonna take need another shot maybe we can get the mage to finish them off let's get the mage to finish them off this one packed quite a punch i didn't mean to do that um there is an undo button i've heard delete but there's a button fortunately um all right so let's just hit some of the guys who are, who've made it this far. Um, I need I need him to back up a little bit because things are kind of not in an ideal range right now. Uh, and he has one more action point, so he'll hit, hit this guy back there. So we're gonna need to do some, get our hands dirty and, and kill some of these units. We're, we're just using our basic attacks to um, clean up a little bit. That does a lot of damage. I didn't even go full power. Wow. No, no, this isn't really the best time to be showing off. Transfer. I'm wondering if something like that would be worthwhile. We could do a crush, but I don't think that that would actually be good. I can't, unfortunately, I can't reach these guys. I could go here and then do a crush and that would reach. Oh, that would actually reach. So let's do two of those and get rid of it. Oh no, he dodged. That's not good. He's gonna be able to reach me now. Can we take that guy out with a sword of Demaculis? <laughs> nice. Um, so we have two more action points on that, on our on our mage. And then, uh, so that's, yeah, that's basically it. Let's uh, take out another couple. Actually, we'll, what we'll do is we're not gonna take anyone else out. We're just gonna weak soften them up a little bit so that they, their movement is reduced. I'm hoping that will kind of slow down the, the ones in the back as well. Because it's difficult for them to shuffle around maybe a little bit. Still not seeing any more um, runners, but we have plenty to contend with right now. So that's not exactly ideal. All right, we're going to move our sword and board character up and we're going to do a nice, a good old crush. And we'll do a bash. And um, we could do another crush, I suppose, but I'm a little bit worried about him getting too, um, like, exposed. I managed to take another kill. Take that. He has one more action point left, so what I could do is um, I'm going to move him here, hit this guy, and then move him far back. All right. That's, that was a pretty good set of turns, I think. 
Then we're going to use our mage to take out some of these lads. And then um, we can start to, well, I don't know. Well, let's, let's stuff our, our ranger here and they'll do what they can. Those hundreds are pretty good. Nice. And one more. And that's gonna reduce all of their movement. Nice. And yeah, if you reduce their movement, then, uh, sorry, if you, if you just do like one hit to reduce their movement, then it I think it will help a lot. And it will probably maybe hem in um, the, the, craw the, the runners so that they can't get to you in time. It might be worth in the beginning doing a couple of like extra, um, you know, hits into the front. Like do do your big magic to, to damage all the ones in the front. Um, and in that way you can uh, basically slow down the entire horde. Just make sure you kill them before they get to you, right? So there we go. And they got their, their uh, recovery a bit. Another knight survived. We got quite a bit of experience. I'm not sure what this means. It, it's showing me runners and crawlers. Um, I know it's clawers, but I, I honestly, if I <laughs> if I can make a recommendation, is just change that. That sounds so it's so awkward to say clawers, clawers, clawers. I don't know. All right. HP lost 41. Uh, Gregory got a little bit of recovery. Everyone got some kills, so that's pretty good. We got some money, and um, that's our city panic. Night reward. Are, am I selecting one of these? One new item, 100 materials, 100 gold. I think... Oh, no, I get all of them. Okay, nice. Uh, well, that was easy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, except they're coming in from the southeast. I dread the moment when we have them coming in from like multiple directions or like all directions. Assign workers to building tasks on the buildings you have built. Um, on ruins to get gold and materials by destroying them. Spend gold to construct buildings and upgrade them. Buy new gear for heroes and more. Spend materials to erect defenses around the haven level up increase their primary and secondary attributes to reinforce a strength or alleviate a weakness build your own combination of passive abilities to further specialize their playstyle. <clears throat> items have two elements that define their power defi level defines the value of the attribute and damage um, represented by the roman numeral at the bottom of the icon and the plus x in the same in in the name Okay, rarity adds random bonus attributes to the base item represented by the color of the item. So from what I understand, from what I've read about this game, everything, not just like, you know, like everything is procedurally generated. Like, you know, I don't know about the layout of, of the uh, level, but, um, you know, heroes are kind of generated. They're, they're very randomly rolled um, as well as, I mean, obviously the hordes that come in but like a lot of things are are up to the subject of dice rolls so that's it's an interesting way of doing things but it also means that balancing is like truly up in the air the way we mitigate that is of course we give the player as many tools as possible to um, create uh, their own play style and um, you know hopefully via this city building mini game i wouldn't sit, call it a mini game it's very much part of the game but as we start building up the city we will gain the new items and passives and stuff and you may get some very interesting roll runs where you get someone like kind of uh you know doesn't have everything that you want and you have to get it for them but um I'll, some of this is speculation i will admit uh level up so let's first level up our heroes um, let's see what how much um, control we get over this level up ability. Cultist, uh, heavy sleeper. So these are some of the things that are randomly generated. This guy gets l uh, less mana. 
He gets less, less mana total, but I think he might have... Uh, he has pretty good regen, so it's not a big problem right now. Pick a primary attribute. So we could increase his movement speed, his physical damage. Um, that might that is very obviously a good idea. Uh, protected layer preventing health loss. Fully restil, restored every turn. That sounds very good. Let's give him some armor. Pick a secondary attribute. Stun chance. Opportunism. Healing received. Multiplier applied to any kind of health restored to this hero. Sounds, sounds really good. Um, stun chance might be good. With stomp, that would be kind of really nice. Reliability, the minimum damage of an attack. At 100%, the attack will always deal its maximum damage. Kind of nice, actually. Um, let's go with a 5% stun chance. So good, um, good options. They actually feel pretty good. Like I, I always look out for like, oh, you know, games that have like chance-based effects. And yes, they are chance-based effects. But in this case, it's like stacking percentage of a, a skill, and it's not like zero point anything. It's not one or two or three. Five percent is pretty good. That's at least enough to be discernible. Um, you know, something that always concerns me with games like this are, is the. Um, temptation to add skills that don't actually change the game very much uh, in order to you know maintain a balance but the problem is is that balance is not very interesting for the player so I really appreciate some of those choices there they were all pretty interesting and I'd be I'd be uh, honestly hard uh, it would be hard for me to, to choose between them so now we have perk points unlocks the sprint skill allowing to restore movement points in exchange for some health that sounds awful if i'm being honest i don't think i would ever want to exchange health for anything plus four mana increased by two for each level of the hero that sounds really good every two attacks from this hero from the hero dodged by at least one unit restore one action point uh that's a weird way of putting that does that mean like every time every two times a attack is dodged by this hero they get some action points back difficult to kind of figure that one out potion throw plus one bag equipment slot upgrades the jump over skill cheer unlocks the cheer skill allowing to buff the damage of an ally um i think i i think i'll go for mana growth and so we have tier two um perks next time they level up we can we'll have a look at those maybe next because we have we have two other heroes that we need to uh level up um how do I switch between them? Oh, here we go, Florian. Uh, all right, so they're gonna be the same. We, we gotta, we gotta do their level them. They have demonic blood, extra physical damage, critical chance, resistance. But they're simple-minded. Less magic damage, less experience gained. Interesting. And then in escaped slave, ten percent dodge, less health less daily health regen okay well maybe we can mitigate that a little bit by giving them some health back but uh, they're a ranged unit and I'm hoping to keep them away from danger as much as possible so um, we might just want to go ahead and increase their ranged damage kind of make them a little bit glass canyon <laughs> glass canyon glass cannon um, they have quite a lot. Of, they have they have pretty good abilities for hitting a lot of foes, so it might be good. We can do hero customization. I don't. Oh, I see. Oh, that's interesting. That's a lot of customization for a hero. I'm pro that's probably gonna die. <laughs> we could do skill range. That sounds really good, actually. Stun chance is very tempting. Multiplier applied to the damage dealt to isolated targets. That's actually pretty tempting because. We do, uh, does that mean that if they're alone, unit with no adjacent ally? Okay, that's not a bad idea actually, because um, this hero is going to tend to use their their basic attack, um, and that could be a good one for them. So I think I'll, I'll try that. That's an interesting uh, skill. I haven't seen that in too many games. Harvester, okay, let's sprint um, is the same. I still don't like that. Every three enemies killed, plus one daily mana regen. This sounds amazing. As long as the hero didn't move during this turn, 
plus 10% accuracy plus one skill range. Uh, and then these seem to be maybe the same. No, armor is increased by 110% of the hero's daily health regen. Unlocks the quick reload skill, allows the, to restore use to one, to all the skills of the current weapon set. Interesting idea. Um, kind of like steady aim, but I also kind of like harvester. Let's do steady aim for now. We could possibly take another tier one perk later, but I'm assuming, um, oh, require two additional perks. Oh, that's tier three. So we could take a tier two ter perk on their next level up. I'm just wondering if it would be worth also taking level one perks. Like, you know, do you only want to take, like do a linear progression of tier one, tier three, two, tier three, tier four. Um, all right. So what do we have for Lorelei? Lorelei is our mage. So, um, extra mana growth would be very, very good for them. Every two attacks from the hero dodge. This is a, still a bizarre one. I'm not sure I understand it. Quick reload, coagulation, potion throw. Those look to be more or less the same. I think I'm going to go with mana growth. I think that's a good one to take. Um, we'll also do their level up. Do we want to give them armor? I don't think I do. I feel like I'd rather give them ranged damage. I don't know what this means. Reroll attributes. If you don't like the choices offered, you can reroll them, but there will be less options to choose from. You have two rerolls per level up. Interesting. Damage. Multiplier applied to the damage of every attack. Well, that sounds really good. Oh, these are uncommon. Oh, I see. So these. Oh, every time you level up, you're given a choice of randomly selected choices. I thought there was like, oh, this is like. These are the choices for this class, but no. So you have un common and then common choices that is that's that's i gotta be honest that's pretty ballsy that is a that's gotta be a really difficult thing to balance if if you can but i i really like that wizard i drank the blood of some people um plus three percent magical damage plus five percent critical less mana less daily mana regen that's not a great thing for a mana caster or a magic caster Daily, but, but we get Mystic, so we get extra daily mana regen, which actually makes up for more than the loss there, but less physical damage. So that's a, oh, I mean, that's totally fine. We don't want physical damage as a caster, I would assume. Less, one less bag slot, but extra move points. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So now, that's a, that was a lot of time spent leveling up our heroes. We're doing a lot here. Production complete, night reward, production. One, Plus one item. Choose a reward. Armor to boots. Uh, extra accuracy. Uh, oh, this is a rare trinket. Extra poison damage. Extra action points. Um, or we have a, a tier one. This is a... What is this? Common? Uncommon? One-handed melee weapon. Uncommon. So we could give that to someone. Oh, I see. This is a, We can choose from for someone to get one of these. Well, I'm not a huge fan of these, although it wouldn't be a terrible idea to give Gregory a, maybe a better weapon. But honestly, I'm more interested in giving someone an, more action points. Maybe Gregory? And that would increase his accuracy as well. And give him more armor. So, yeah, let's let's give Gregory a, uh, a better set of boots. So now we have to build a new structure. I appreciate this. By the way, it's just like a checklist almost like we okay, we're in the production phase. We're almost choosing we're, we're almost playing this like a worker um, placement game and it's like here's what you do. You got you get a couple of choices, you're going to make a few choices, you're going to build a few things and then we're moving on. And I appreciate that this is how straightforward this is. Um, it doesn't make me do m like much of any guesswork. Although uh, it seems I have to figure out um, construction. Oh, I see. Here we go. Can it restore some health to heroes during production phase with the help of workers? Can restore some mana to heroes during production phase. Shop grants the ability to buy or sell items during production phase. The roster. Um, okay, so these are structures. Let's have a look at the fences. So this gives us the ability to build walls. And we do have 100... 
uh, we'll call it material, I guess. Um, doesn't block line of sight. Adjacent heroes can jump over. Doesn't block line of sight. Okay, so um, since we're dealing with this zone next, maybe we want to build some wooden walls. Oh, we can only build walls within the city. I guess that makes sense. But I was kind of hoping I could build some... Def oh, I can. So you can build these barricades outside the zone, but you can only build the walls inside our city, uh, which is also true for reinforced wooden walls. Interesting. Okay, so why don't we put up a couple walls there, and we'll put one up there. I don't know how to rotate walls. I'm hoping that if I place a wall, it will naturally be the right direction. Yes, okay. That was just an experiment. Um, so why don't we put up a couple of barricades? All right, so that's pretty good. They're, that hems them in pretty pretty hard, and then we can, um, you know, take some time to shoot uh, the ones in the front. But um, you know, we I have money. I don't necessarily want to spend all of my very weak defense, but very cheap. Okay. Well, um, let's. Construction that was uh, defense. D these require money, so they're they're something we can buy for free. Is there anything we need to repair? I don't think so. Um, I wouldn't mind. Can we like this? Uh, oh, we can upgrade these house expansion. Well, I wanted to destroy this because that'll give us some extra gold and um, materials possibly. Salvages twenty eight gold and 28 materials from the runes, destroying them in the process. Why don't we reclaim some materials? So that's that taken care of. Um, I don't know, I think that used up both of our workers, so now we can't really, we don't really have any workers left to do anything else, unless it's, we, like, can we build these even if we don't have workers? seems that the shop is not available to buy. Um, we could build... Oh, I see. we got like a Tetramino thing going on. Can we rotate this? It doesn't look like it. If I could rotate it, then I could um, place it here, but it doesn't look like I can. So maybe we want to upgrade one of our houses. Increases your workers by one. Uh, let's... Yeah, let's do that. Seems like a good idea. And that gives us an extra worker to work with. Uh, nice that you get it right away. Tends to be that when you uh, do something to increase your workers, you don't get them right away. Upgrades heal. Um, so we could, this is, uh, we have a, a temple here, um, which is, I guess, what, we, what I was already looking at building. Um, so we could heal one of our units. Uh, I think Gregory is a little bit damaged, but I mean, maybe they could they could be okay. Um, or we could upgrade, buy or sell items during the production phase. Well, this is the production phase, so can I buy and sell items? Yes, I can. Uh, there's quite quite the myriad of interesting items here, including uh, attack turtle charm. Interesting. We'll have a look at that in a second. Um. So, what about the well? Oh, can be scavenged for some gold and materials. I think I would... Let's, let's grab some gold from this one. That gives us maybe some more building space. Um, so, and I'm not sure... I guess we don't want to buy anything else. It would be better if we could spend some money on uh, some better gear. We only have the one armored boots. Did I not give that to our our lad? Uh, Gregory. No, Gregory. Where where does this go? It goes in that slot. Okay. 
So um, let's look at the shop. There's a, a lot to look at in this game and it's gonna be difficult for me to cover everything uh, and, and make this also a short video. So basically it's gonna be a long video. Um, oh, we've got a really nice set of armor. Uh, extra health, less move points. Um, resistance, critical power, armor, move points. So it gives you movement points in, uh, <laughs> for, you know, as a cost for giving you, taking away movement points. I don't know. That's, that's pretty interesting. It also gives you brace. So, um, a, you know, the, someone can break. This would be pretty good for Gregory, and I kind of do want to equip Gregory um, if I can. Fire thrower scroll. I assume this is like a one use thing. Yeah, consumable. And then ground smash scroll. So, yeah, we've got. So this one gives us extra magic damage. That would be nice, obviously, for uh, Lorelei. So, let's go ahead and buy this for Gregory and then for Lorelei I guess it this isn't their actual inventory we'll, we'll buy this for Lorelei and that's gonna be all of our money spent we're gonna make sure we equip them so let's give Lorelei that and then we'll give Gregory that and now he's got pretty good stuff uh, I'm not sure if maybe we could give the Ranger Florian some hand-me-downs probably not it seems like he uh, is good with dodge. This one seems to give him armor and increase the dodge, so that's not bad. Also gives him brace. Oh, I see. He could get evasion with his current. His current armor gives him... Oh, wait, what? His current armor gives him plus 10 armor and brace, whereas this one would give him evasion. How is his dodge? How would I even find that out? Oh, 23%. That's not bad. So if we increased his dodge, then that's like pretty good. So now it's 25. Was it less than that before? It was, I don't know, 25%. That's a one in four chance of dodging. That's not bad. So we have no workers, apparently. I thought I had a worker available, um, but I was wrong about that. What happened to our other worker? Oh, I guess I used them to remove that well. Okay, well, that's not a terrible use of them. Build some defenses. We could build a, a couple more defenses, but I think we're okay. So let's end the production phase. We're going to be in deployment phase. So let's go ahead and put in our, our, our lads. Actually, let's move them there, and then we'll move. <clears throat> Gregory will be as far forward as they can be. Actually, maybe this should be like here since this is um, one of the few places where they can get in. And we'll see. We'll see what uh, this looks like. The spell's power. I can't channel it. It's too much. <coughs> All right. They're coming in on the left side. Oh, wow. They're doing, doing some damage to the... So they where they come in is, is kind of random. We have a splitter. I'm not sure what that means. Um, let's go ahead and maybe hit the splitters. Like I say, I'm going to want to try and hit the ones in the front. So the problem with moving Gregory too far forward is that it, he's going to get absolutely destroyed. So I think instead I'm going to spend some action points bracing himself. I feel like for a given duration, I guess it only does it for one turn, so there's not really much point in doing that. Um, I don't like the idea of not doing anything for this turn, but it might be honestly the best idea for us. Could do it just a normal volley. Okay, this, this seems okay. That was... How come we can't do it again? Oh, they, we can only use that once per turn? Interesting. So let's do... Let's just do some precise shots. Take out some more dudes. I love the sound effects. Alright, that's, that's a pretty good first turn. 
I cannot do this alone. Hold it together. All of this is your fault. It's over. There's just too many. I don't think it's over. We're, we're, we're okay for now. So let's do a rain of arrows. Um, maybe not. Let's just do another volley. That's five units right there. So that's that's as good as you can get, really. That, I see that that lad there has some armor. He's armored. <laughs> that's his name. Is armor. Um, lack of accuracy of ranged damage is nullified by this effect. I think we want to do like let's try our first power shot on this armored lad. Oh wow, that was the right choice apparently. Um. So this, we can't really do anything with Grigory just yet. I'm hoping for them, well, I don't want them to get close enough to us to, in order for him to be useful, but that's kind of what we're looking at. So let's just go ahead and throw out some um, normal spells. And I'm gonna start using the hotkeys because I'm gonna be using these quite a lot. And again, I'm gonna be trying and to damage as many people or as many zombies, whatever creatures as I can before, um, you know, killing them because it's going to slow them down a bit. Magic circle, it's just not, not strong enough. It's over, there's just too many. So they're hitting our defenses now. Now is the, the opportunity for Gregory to do some work. So he's gonna come forward and he's gonna do a crush. Um, if they get, things get really nasty, then he can do a stomp, but uh, they, they, they're not there yet. So then we want to do probably a rain of arrows at this point. This seems pretty good. I mean, that's almost every slot filled. Nice. The magic. My magic is weakening. Well, you're just going to have to sit tight, bud. Um, so this seems pretty good. Hit the ones in the back to continue slowing the horde. And then we're going to have uh, Lorelei kind of kill a few of the ones left over. Let's do a magic missiles. We'll hit uh, quite a few of them. That was a real uh, Simpsons zombie sound effect right there. Nice. I like this uh, strategy, you know, of, of just kind of like weakening the whole horde before we start getting kills. My body, the seal, is too strong. Another mage, quick. Find another mage. There is still hope left. Surely the other havens will be able to break all the seals. No, what? What happened? What? What is what is happening? I am making a choice. Rejoice, O earth and sea, for I have come with gifts in hand. What the? Fear not, mortal. I wish thee no harm. <laughs> Be not afraid. I am but a gleam, a mere refraction of what I could become. Who are you? A whisper in the dawn. I was two, but now I am one. Nowhere and everywhere, we dwell deep down and high above. Cometh to me whenever thou achieveth, achievest mighty deeds, and I shall reward thou and thy people. And let us all rejoice, for thou will live again until they, thy work here is done. Now go for my prodigal herald of hope. Go, my prodigal herald of hope, and cometh again. Receive my blessings for thy wondrous accomplishments. Unlocks, it has come to your attention that another haven is also trying their best to break the seal of magic. Looks like Gildenberg could do with your help. Requirements, play one run in Swampfurt. Interesting. So did I just win a run? 
That was not something I expected. Look at all of the things I have available to me. More perk collections. Uh, heroes are generated with a bigger perk tree. Complete one run. Um, unlocks the item spear, the longbow. So, okay, let me let me talk about this because um, for some of you, it may be obvious what this is. It seems to me like this is um, the potentially dreaded meta progression. But here's the thing. Here's the good news. Uh, if I want to run, then that's no longer meta progression. That's just progression, right? That's just you get more stuff between runs. You're making more choices. More choices is good so long as the game is relying on the player winning and not necessarily losing. So though I would normally be like filled with a sense of dread at making these kinds of choices, the fact that I am able to win a run is very encouraging um, to, so that these choices actually mean something. Uh, whereas if I have to just kind of play as hard as I possibly can to lose and then I get as many points as I can to get the next unlock then that's a little bit you know not not my favorite play style but i am i am interested in this this is this is pretty cool so we're getting more choices for buildings and stuff more weapons that might turn up this is also adding to possibly the uh, randomization so this is again adding to um, replayability and not necessarily um, just like you get more stuff you have more damage you're doing better you have the means to actually win this time not sure what these are favors we have one favor one percent scavenger camp building passively generating some materials that sounds really good looks like we can't get that more perk collections can we get that looks like i can't get anything right now how do i what am i doing right now cycle through new entries So what's the other choice? Welcome to the oraculum, Commander. What? Lower your voice, fool, or you will get us caught and all will be up for naught. The oraculum is what I said. Are you deaf beyond dead? Where am I? A rather formidable place if I do say so myself. Deep inside your mind, deep inside your head. I am the shadows. I am the dark. I am the pain deep b inside your heart. Don't tell the other one, for I will help you. Let it be a little dev devious secret between me and you. Would you be so kind as to partake of those useless souls you collected from the slain? In exchange, I will share powers and secrets to help in your formidable quest. So we have 200 souls. Will you sell your tainted essence to me, dear? interesting choice you know uh everything about that tells me that i should not do that and yet i feel like that is the only way to progress i don't know i don't know what's going on here so it feels to me like i have to do this mixed weapon set So our next one is like 2,000 souls, 600 souls. So this is maybe uh, the armor maker builder building, crafting some defenses. This is a bit more of what I was talking about where you're kind of grinding uh, kills in order to progress. Um, so I think that's it. I don't think we can get anything else here. So we leave. Oh, wow. Was not expecting a world map. So this is where we came from maybe? Gildenberg. Is that not where we already settled? Standard difficulty. Uh -huh. Easy mode. The last spell was designed with a certain difficulty in mind. It is the experience we crafted and wanted you to play, but it might not be for everyone, and we understand that, so we added some optional gameplay modifiers to table the difficulty to anyone's preference. We advise against using them until having experienced some of the game by yourself. If you find yourself struggling with it, though, it is perfectly fine to use them. Okay. That's highly, highly decent. I really appreciate that. Nice. Um, and also, thank you for, like, you know, super thank you for not having a condescending tone. 
about it because like some games like to have that it's like well you know if you want to be a baby about it i guess you could play on piss easy mode don't do that it's like uh, very unnecessary but i will try the standard difficulty and so far i'm not finding things too difficult i am finding things actually super engaging and actually i really like this game <laughs> um so this is maybe more of what a standard map looks like or maybe this is just a different map it could be that every map has its own flavor um i'll tell you what though i feel like i should end this let's try because that's pretty good uh it's already quite long and we've gotten a taste of all of the mechanics i would super love to do a series on this um let me know in the comments is this something you would love to see more of uh you know this this is really cool this is honestly of of the last uh, bunch of tactics games like one of my favorites like for real i i really like it it's everything is on point um really interesting choices to make excellent execution of course the music and the art is uh, fantastic and it's got some really nice just little visual effects that really add um, some juice to the whole th experience and it's something I haven't seen a lot before uh, you know generally a lot of tactics games kind of come across as puzzly and that's fine I like that but I appreciate that this one is m a bit more about um, survival and it's a bit more about um, just kind of going up against the odds a lot of units like I don't know just fighting a lot of units to me is a different flavor from just like fighting one or two units because it comes it it it, uh, it plays not not so much like a puzzle game as it does um, a, a game of genuine like tactics and survival I don't know how to ex best explain it but it's a it's a different flavor and it uh, it's a very appreciated and you can really try to get into how you optimize your skills in interesting ways and I'm in, I'm very excited to see what else they have to offer in this game like other items that give us different skills maybe we get some things that can synergize and like some of our heroes have some combo attacks like one will apply effects and others will uh, come in for a landing blow or something like that but uh, so far I'm really really enjoying this this is this is really cool so um, the last spell uh, maybe this was a short look at but I think you got a taste of all it has to offer and I would certainly like to show off more but you'll have to let me know in the comments um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, def definitely hit that like button. Consider subscribing um, to my channel and also to my coffee. Thank you very much for the to the subscribers who have, are supporting the channel. And I'll see you guys in the future. Thanks very much. Take it easy.